Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm completely transforming this huge dining table. If you enjoy seeing major transformation, you're going to want to stick around for this one. This dining table is ready for a modern makeover. But before I do anything, it's important for me to first determine what it's made of. Knowing what parts of veneer or engineered wood as opposed to solid wood not only tells me how to prep but how I refinish. You can see there I already sanded a small area. I wanted to see what the bare wood looked like. The top and the overhang are actually wood veneers while the molding, that black part, is solid wood. <laughs> At least one of us is enjoying this hot summer. Instead, I'll be working on this dining table. My plans are to completely remove the finish on the tabletop and then paint the base black. Of course, I get started as usual with cleaning. I'm using a 50-50 mix of vinegar and water here. There are several ways to remove a finish from furniture. I initially started with a chemical stripper, but after doing a small area, I decided I was just gonna sand. And for many reasons. For one, I did not wanna deal with inhaling the fumes, even though I wore a respirator. It was also very hot and humid, and I would have to use a lot of products so it didn't dry out as fast, which would add up really fast in terms of the cost. And more than anything, I really didn't feel like I wanted to deal with all the mess this huge surface was gonna make. I then switched over to using my Festool Orbital Sander. I started with 80 grit to remove that initial layer and then moved up to 120, then 180. And although this is taking a while, this is doing a great job at removing the finish layer by layer. Now for the sides, I'm using this pair of concave scrapers to remove the black paint. They have all these different sizes which make it easy to manipulate it around that molding. Then I'm using a scraper for that flat part. It's about an inch wide and the only one I had at the time. I did order a wider one which I was able to use to finish it up later. Once I had most of the finish removed, I sanded it. I used a surf prep sanding sponge on my Festool sander and cleaned it up. Using a sanding sponge is great for these curved areas. It gets the job done without compromising or distorting the shape. I am starting to see the light. Whilst I'm waiting on that scraper, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that base. Since I am painting it, there's no need to remove the entire finish. I'm just using a 120 grit to scuff it up. And since it is curved, I'm gonna continue using that sanding sponge.
My new scraper came in, so I'm gonna finish up the sides. I'm almost to the finish line, guys. Okay, I am so excited, it's time to start putting on the finishes. I cleaned this up really good with a damp cloth to remove all the dust. Then I used a tack cloth right before applying two coats of clear shellac both on the base and the tabletop. It's finally time to mess with some paint. I'm using General Finishes Milk Paint in the color Lamp Black and applying it with my Wagner Flexio Sprayer. I turn the table upside down so I can get those round feet done properly. I did one coat and then a few days later, I turned the table back on its feet. Now here's something you should always do if you want a silky smooth finish. Sand between coats. I know it feels counterproductive in a way because you're putting dust all over your new paint job. But here's why. Look at this part. You can see there was a bit of a run. You want to look for those and sand them off before layering up with another coat of paint. And do the same as you layer up with top coats. These do feel like extra steps, but I promise you it's worth it. You're guaranteed to get a silky smooth finish. I'm being a bit of a mad scientist here. I'm using General Finishes high performance top coat, but I'm mixing equal parts flat with satin. I don't like much of a sheen, but the higher the sheen, the better the protection. So I compromised. If you're mixing sheens like I am doing here, you want to make sure it's integrated really well. I made sure each can was properly stirred, and then once I put them together, I stirred it really well. Even when I was spraying it on, I kept shaking the canister to keep it mixed well. And as always, right before any finish, you want to make sure and wipe away any dust. I may be a little bit more prone because I work outside, but dust comes by pretty fast. So I always, always wipe with a damp cloth, then I use a tack cloth, and then I spray my finish on. I applied three coats of this top coat, with days in between each coat. And I used a very fine grit sandpaper between the first and the second coat, just to knock away any bits of dust that may have landed while it was drying. How is that for a darling of a finish? Now let's get back to the top. I'm first doing a paint wash using General Finishes Milk Paint in the color Millstone. I'm mixing about a third paint to two thirds water, then applying it with a brush and wiping it back with a shop cloth. I 
I think everyone does their paint wash a little bit different. I know some damp the surface or they damp the cloth. For this particular application, I'm doing neither. I prefer to minimize the amount of liquid that sits on this surface. So I'm brushing it on and wiping it back with a dry sharp cloth. I feel like that gives me a little more control since I'm essentially removing the paint. That way I can decide how translucent I want it to be. Either way, the trick to a good paint wash is to make sure when you're wiping it back, you wipe it all the way across the surface. Stopping at intervals leaves a mark. So you want to make sure you get that continuous stroke right across the surface. My final step to getting this finish done. Well, not so final. The top coat's the final. I'm using Lily Moon Smoky Gel Stains in the color Old Fashioned. And I'm just doing one light coat of this. In last week's furniture flip, I tried it out for the first time on that small console just to get a feel for the product. And I know I just got done explaining how I do my paint brush with a dry towel. But this product is quite different. It dries really fast. So you have to lightly spritz the surface with water and I found using a damp high density foam glides it on nicely. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I know I did a lot of different steps in this furniture flip and time doesn't always permit me to explain the why. I'm trying to keep these videos short and to the point. So if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments. I reply to every single one. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Thank you so much to all of you that like and comment on my videos every single week. When YouTube sees that you engage with my video, they show it to more people. So that helps my channel grow. And if you haven't already, be sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video every week. Here's a little throwback to what this dining table looked like before. And here it is now. <music>